Today's lesson 14, Mushroom Farms. Fungi are amazing organisms that are an important part of ecosystems around the world. There are many kinds of fungi, including yeasts, molds, mildews, and mushrooms. However, not all of them are edible. You have probably seen mold grow on fruit or other food that has been in your fridge well past its expiration date. Food that has mold growing on it has gone bad and should not be eaten. However, not all fungi are damaging to food. In fact, today you're going to learn about one that is grown specifically so that you can eat it. Mushrooms and yeast are the most important and commonly eaten fungi. They are found not only in the produce section of your local grocery store, but also in the canned vegetable aisle. Even though mushrooms are a common food, not all of them can be safely eaten. In fact, many that are <clears throat> grown in the wild are dangerous to eat and can even prove deadly. If you see any growing in the wild, you should not touch them unless you have a knowledgeable uh, adult with you who knows about the safety of the wild mushrooms. Some people are quick to pass um, on mushrooms thinking they are just fungi. They are just fungus. However, mushrooms are an amazing source of nutrients. They are low in calories but pack an amazing punch. They are a significant source of fiber, vitamins, antitoxins, proteins, and other minerals. Fiber is an important part of a diet that helps your body regulate sugar and eliminate toxins. The vitamins and antitoxins found in mushrooms can help to keep your body, particularly your heart, healthy. Meet Samuel. He has always been fascinated with mushrooms. As a kid, he loved to wander through the woods looking for ones that were unique and fascinating. He enjoyed reading all about them in field guides whenever he had a sp spare moment. As he grew older, he realized that he was spending a lot of time thinking about mushrooms and a lot of his mon money buying new varieties to try. One day, he began to wonder if he could actually grow them himself. After researching for months about how to grow mushrooms effectively and experimenting with growing them on logs in his yard, he decided to dive in and invest in a mushroom farming operation. He begins his day by checking on each stage of growth. He checks on the ones that he has just inculated last week and then heads to see if any are ready to harvest. He has a routine that he goes through that helps him to keep on top of his production. Today he will harvest mushrooms that are already that are ready and do some deliveries. Tomorrow he'll move some into a growing room where ventilation and humidity are key to seeing them produce commercially uh, viable mushrooms. Later in the week, he'll begin looking on starting another set of beds to begin growing. This system allows him to always have a fresh supply for his customers. Someday, he may have to hire more help, but for now, he is able to manage his mushroom growing operation himself. Growing Mushrooms when you think of growing food, you probably envision planting a seed and having a green shoot shoot out of the rich black soil. Because mushrooms are a fungi, not, not plants, the way they grow is very different from what most people are familiar with. They do not produce seeds, nor do they need rich black soil to grow. In fact, many mushroom farms are indoors where the climate and growing conditions can be carefully controlled. Mushrooms reproduce using tiny microscopic spores that cannot be seen, handled, or planted like seeds. If you've ever seen a piece of bread begin to mold, you may have noticed that the mold can first be seen in almost thread-like strands. These strands are called mycelium. Mycelium is the visible beginning of a fungal growth. They are essentially the root system of a fungus. Once these strands begin to form... They can be separated and used to grow multiple fungi. When mycelium is reproduced in this way, it is called spawn. If some commercial mushroom production 
in some commercial mushroom productions, mycelium is allowed to begin to grow on grain seeds so they can be used to grow new mushrooms while others rely on spawn that is not attached to the grains. The first step to growing mushrooms is to have an appropriate growing medium. The most natural medium used are fallen dead logs. While farmers farming them on logs can be an inexpensive way to begin, most commercial farmers chose to use other substrates, materials farmers use to grow their mushrooms, to grow their products. Some farmers use straw, while others choose to use treated sawdust. Still others farmers have large operations where they have sophisticated process of composting and creating their own substrate. Regardless of the chosen material, if a farmer is growing their mushrooms in a controlled environment, they must make sure that there is no other fungi or bacteria that are present in the substrate. This could affect the growing process and can be damaging to a farmer's business. Once the substrate is prepared, spawn is used to inculate the growing area. Inculation is the process of introducing the spawn into the substrate so it can begin to grow and multiply. Although the process is very different from planting a seed, inculation is the planting step in growing fungi of any sort, whether it be for food or in a lab for science experiment. Large farms inculate big areas all at once, while smaller farms have smaller areas to inculate. In fact, relatively small-scale farms often grow their mushrooms in bags of treated and in inculated substrate. This ensures that they are easy to transport, harvest, and manage. After the mushroom growing medium has been inoculated with spawn, it needs to be inculated incubated so the mycelium has time to colonize or spread across the substrate. This requires patient moisture and air movement. Once mushrooms begin to grow, they require special condition in order to develop. Many farms move their mushrooms into specially designed rooms for the final growing stage. These rooms must have proper ventilation and moisture. While pl Plants take in carbon dioxide and release oxygen. Mushrooms do the opposite. They take oxygen in and expel carbon dioxide. In a natural habitat, this is not an issue because wild mushrooms grow surrounded by plant life that produce oxygen for them. However, in a room full of mushrooms and no other living thing, it is necessary to have a system to bring oxygen into the room from outside. If there is not enough air exchange happening where mushrooms go, the carbon dioxide content rises above optimum level for growth. In most growing operations, this is an, as easy as having an intake fan close to the roof of one end of the building and the exhaust fan close to the floor on the other. This system is simple, but it effectively brings down the carbon dioxide level while operating properly. You may have noticed that mushrooms tend to pop up on your lawn or in parks when it has been a very wet summer. In years that it is hot and dry, there are not as many growing in obvious places. This is because they need high humidity and relatively cool temperatures to grow well. Growing rooms for mushrooms are often equipped with automatic misting systems that is designed to keep the room at an ideal humidity so they can grow without hindrance. They also have climate control so the mushrooms do not get too warm. Sounds like mushroom farms are more like science labs than farms, doesn't it? Once they are grown to maturity, they are harvested. Most mushrooms are harvested by hand and they must be the optimal size. This allows the smaller ones to continue to grow. Harvesting by hand also makes certain that the delicate fungi is not damaged in processing or harvesting. Some farmers use the substrate a second time to grow another crop, while others choose to compost that substrate and begin fresh. Equipment. To grow mushrooms successfully on a commercial scale, farmers need to have spaces dedicated to the different steps involving in the process. 
Growing rooms, where there are given proper air exchange, humidity, and lighting, are an important piece of equipment for growing mushrooms on a large scale. Some farmers even require a lab for the inclination process. Others don't need such a specialized space, depending on the substrate used. Some mushroom farmers have special tools they use to turn and mix water compost as they prepare it for substrate. The equipment used for these processes is, is often large machinery. The compost piled or watered and turned until they decompose into a substrate that is ideal for planting. Then the substrate is sterilized to ensure that the mushrooms have no competition as they grow in newly formed beds. Many farmers purchase their spawn to start each crop from a professional company. However, if they choose to produce their own spawn, they need dedicated space to allow the delicate mycelium to begin its growth. If this process is not done in a carefully regulated way, the, spawn, the spores of other fungi can easily contaminate the process with an undesirable end result. <clears throat> Storage and processing. Mushrooms are delicate. When they are harvested, they must be in optimal conditions. If they are wet or dry, they will not store well for transportation and sale as fresh mushrooms. Harvested ones are usually kept in a climate-controlled environment to make their shelf life longer and to ensure that they are still good when they get to the customer. If you've ever helped pick out the produce on the grocery store, you may have noticed that all the vegetables are pretty clean. Even the things that grow underground like carrots and potatoes are clean and dry when you buy them. However, if you've ever helped, helped cut up mushrooms in the kitchen, you may have noticed that there are sometimes chunks of dirt on them. These chunks that are sometimes on them of substrate are still there because the fungi cannot be washed before they are packaged or they'll go bad faster. Mushrooms not destined for produce section are quickly sent to the facilities where they are, f there they are further processed. If the mushrooms are to be dried, they are spread on racks to dry under specific conditions. Some mushrooms are processed and canned. Mushrooms for soup, sauces, and other applications are chopped and processed for use in, re in their re these recipes. Some mushrooms are even frozen and used in prepared stir-fried vegetable mixes found in grocery stores or the freezer aisle. Mushrooms can be enjoyed in a variety of ways. Fresh mushrooms are featured on platters filled with vegetables and added to salads. They can be sautéed alone or with spices for a tantalizing side dish, added to barbecued chicken or steak. They are also featured in many stir-fry and pasta dishes, not to mention favorites like cream of mushroom soup and stuffed mushroom caps. The hot button subject. Using mushrooms as a form of medicine has been practiced for a millennium. Today, there are some people who praise various fungi for their medicinal purposes or benefits. Lion's mane mushrooms are said to improve brain function, while reishi and chata and many others are eaten for their immune-boosting power. Some are said to increase energy, while others are used to boast the strength of organs like your liver or help your cardiovascular system. Today, you are able to buy dried crushed mushrooms in capsules so you can get all the benefits without having to eat huge amounts. These traditional medicinal uses can be controversial topic among healthcare providers. There have not been very many studies and research papers written on traditional medicinal practices that use things like mushrooms as medicine. It is important to consult your doctor before trying any new medicines. In many Chinese cooking traditions, mushrooms of various kinds are frequently used. They can be featured fresh, dried, or cooked. Some types are even used to make a vegetarian soup broth, much like you might use a chicken carcass to make chicken broth. Dried mushrooms are also reconstituted with boiling water before they are used in cooking. 
Different varieties can be served in many different types of sources, making them a versatile and useful ingredient. And that concludes our Lesson 14 for today.